So, what have you been doing this week, Steve? Well, um, I'll tell you what, at the beginning of the week I was, um, incredibly annoyed by Carl. Why? Um, no, uh, well, no, because you, I remember you had a little discussion with Carl a while back saying that, um, you thought he was lazy at times. Yeah. And, you know, you had various criticisms of yeah, his, yeah, his, yeah, his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got a call from him, he said, uh, oh yeah, I should have told you, um, I had a phone call, someone said that they were trying to get hold of Steve Merchant to offer him some lucrative voiceover work. Now you know- That is money time. for old it's money rope. For rope. That's it's about, you're in there for about twenty minutes and it's thousands if of pounds. If there are children listening who are still at school, they should definitely, when the careers guy says, what do you want to do? Try and get voiceover, voice-over work. Work. Just become a voiceover artist. It's money for old rope. Yeah. So I can't believe my luck, cause, yeah. you know, I love money for old rope. Yeah. And, um, I said, well, what was the information? He said, oh, oh, I don't know. I deleted the message. It was on his answer when he deleted the message. I said, right, when did the message come? He said, last week. So he took a week to tell me Why? that he had deleted the message. Why? Just cause it wasn't for you? I mean, I don't know how selfish that is, Carl. Is that, no, what happened is, right, I got back off holiday. Mm. I was at home. Yeah. So I called up my voicemail. Yeah. Right, because I can do that. Yeah. Remote access, right? Because I've got to know what's going on at work. Of course. Called in, it was still my day off. I was going through the messages. Yes. Heard one from some company saying, we're after Steve Merchant. Yeah. We want him to do some voiceover work. Yeah. Right? Mm. I can't remember the name of it, but Thanks. I thought, right, I'll, I'll remember to tell Steve. A week I later. It doesn't matter, does it? You still got the message, and they-, they what, what, what message? Yeah, but voiceovers have to be done in the next couple well, of days. I didn't days. get the message. I got- all I got was, there was a company, I don't remember the name, and they phoned you, they wanted voiceover work. Uh, well, how does that help me? There are hundreds of thousands of media companies. I, I you was didn't more... take down a number, you didn't take down a name, nothing. I, I was more puzzled why they'd want you to voice anything. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't yeah, but listen to that voice. Well, no, you must be annoyed. You must be annoyed. I mean, talk about rubbing salt into the wound. No, but listen to you. Oh, God. I don't know what you- I don't know how you think. I don't know what, how your mind works. Well, I was thinking there must be a tractor sail on somewhere. <laughs> I can't believe- What do I care? What's going no, on? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The worm has turned. I don't care if they want me to advertise, you know, <laughs> the latest designs in pirate fashion wear. I will do a voiceover because it's money for the rope. I don't care what you think of my voice. Someone was interested. They were offering me money. And you decided arbitrarily, oh, they probably wouldn't want it. They probably made a mistake. I, they wouldn't like the way he talks anyway. I'll delete the message. No, the thing is, right, I what get paid- go? I get paid to sit here on a Saturday, yeah. right? Play CDs and that, help out with the show, get you decent prizes. I think I, I, I do me bit. Sure. Right? It isn't about running your voiceover work. So hang on, so Carl, let me just get this right. If someone was ever to phone me, right, trying to get in touch with you, to yeah. offer you work, you'd want me to just ignore the message. That is what you're saying to me. You'd prefer that I deleted the message, I ignored it altogether. That's what you'd want for me to do. That's what you want me to do. What, someone's calling you for some Someone's phoned me. They say, oh, oh, I can't, I don't know, I, I, I'm a friend of a friend, I've got your number, Steve. Uh, I'd love to use Carl Pilkington for a, 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 an exciting sex scene. Well, you said the call, so has it happened? Has well, it happened? well, I'm saying in the future, if it was to occur, <laughs> if it was to occur, do you want me to just ignore it? Is that what you prefer you to do? Uh, well, it's not like that, though. I, I did tell you, I told you the message. You didn't tell- what? You told me a week later with none of oh, the information I needed. Carl, um, that doctor called last week, that kidney's ready for that, um, little girl that you were doing that sponsored walk for. I forgot to tell you. Oh. I hope it's still all right. They keep it on ice, don't they? I think they do. Uh, uh, oh, selfish, uh, Carl. So selfish. And you've lost a thing. Beautiful bit of, uh, Snoop on XFM. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Kicking it with, uh, yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, 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 sweet, sweet, sweet. 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 Uh, Steve Merchant and, uh, Carl Pilkington. I, what has happened to Carl? Cause Carl, I thought, is, you know, is this sort of sweet little buffoon, almost mm. childlike mm. in his, his ways. You know what I mean? Like Charlie Brown after some sort of head injury. And, <laughs> and now he's, and now he's coming back like that, having a go at- not- not caring about voiceover work. It's like- cause he have written about him a couple of weeks, it's like he thinks he's better than you in no, some well, way. I do care though, you're out of order saying that, right? Carl, Cause I've sorted you out with tickets for stuff. Carl, he doesn't turn up to. Carl, I received a phone call, you deleted the message offering me voiceover work, you're as bad as my agent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't- I'm appalled by it. <laughs> and I thought we were friends. Ah, <laughs> uh, at least his agent, when he does it, is losing himself money as well. Yeah, he, you, he, you, he, you, exactly. You've got no comeback. You're still sweet. And to have a go is you. You've got a mank wine. 
Right. Sort of voice. Like a cartoon Gallagher brother on Coronation Street. I mean, and Steve's, I mean, yes, Steve does sound like a, a Wurzel, but that right. doesn't, do you know what I mean? No, no. A, what about Jethro? Jethro does well. Jethro gets on Des O'Connor any time he wants. Just has to phone Des up. And he's on there. Straight on and there. And he's whining like a Wurzel as well. So, you know, to say that all that right, is what, a rubbish- what, All right, apart from that then, what else have I done that's wound you up? Well, that's, that's, that's a, that's a good starting point. Because you haven't even apologised. No, it's a shock because that's the first time I've let you down. And I didn't really let you down because I passed on the message. You didn't- well, we've been through it. You didn't okay. pass on the message. Saying I deleted a message for you is not passing on the message. Yeah. I mean, I just think what's happened is that you've got a little bit of celebrity now from the show. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen you being yeah. recognised in pubs and stuff, or people have come up and they said, are you Carl? Because they've seen Ricky. Now, it just seems to me that you are not keeping yourself grounded. You are just, yeah. you cannot deal with fame, you've not got the intelligence to cope yeah. with the celebrity, oh, and you're just becoming this kind getting. of ego-driven monster. Now it's monster getting, now it's getting. No, it's getting, it scares me, Carl. You're not the man I remember. Look, I, I put a lot of work into this yeah. on Saturday, this isn't even my proper job, right? Mm. Where were you in the week? Oh, he's got you there. What? Where were you in the week? I said, I said, let's meet up, let's, you know, come up with some new features and that. Where were you? Carl, you phoned me yeah. about an hour before you wanted to meet. That is not what I would call. I mean, that, that, that is arrogance right there. That's the way I work. That's arrogance right there. That's ego right there. He couldn't, he couldn't go, uh, it, I, uh, when I came in, he said, where's Steve? I said, Steve can't make it. I had to tell him why. Steve was staying in to tidy up because his landlady was coming. This, this he couldn't get over. He could not get over that you couldn't make it because you had to stay with your landlady. Is, is, he talked about it for about the hour when we were working. What are you talking, I, I, last week I had a bad throat. You yeah, wouldn't what, tolerate what you that. Last you week when, that. You when you had a bad throat, where, where were you? <laughs> Why couldn't we do any work then? Because you were at home with your mum and your dad. <laughs> you, you were on holiday, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> Why didn't you get your mum and your dad to clean the flat? Oh, he's done it again! He's hey. done you again, mate. Play a record. How has he done me? What? Well, they live in Bristol. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, the joke's on you. He couldn't get him to clean the flat. Ah! <laughs> I don't know who's laughing at who, then. All right, listen. Can right. we just go back to laughing at Carl? Okay. Because I know right. where we stand there. <laughs> okay, all right. Do okay. you want to, uh, That's the natural order of things. <laughs> I know, yeah. The world's gone topsy turvy. <laughs> he's, he's stepped out of the pecking yeah. order. Right. Well, someone who I don't let down, right, are the listeners of this show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to, uh, read out the prizes for uh, Busters? We'll get, okay. we'll get that one in. Oh, we're are not we not doing, doing Rockbusters again, are we? Yeah. Well, it was a shambles last week. We, we cancelled it two weeks ago. What? Oh, it just, I mean, there, there you are right there, Rick. I mean, both you and I, and let's be honest, we're the guys with, the, with our names on the poster. I know, it's yeah. It's supposed to be your show. And, and yet, our faces. Exactly, and yet. <laughs> we have to have, we have to be on tube stations with people laughing at yeah. us. Yeah, well, they're not laughing at me, really. They're, they're well, a good I don't know. Better, what do you think people think of the poster, Carl? Seriously. Uh. I don't want to know his opinion. It's just gonna be insulting. <laughs> My point Just is this, Rick. He was looking at you. My point is this, Rick. We used to be able to decide what the content of this show was. I know. Now it's him. It's just him. He wants to do rockbusters. He gets to do it. I know. And it's it's awful, Rob. Like, like, uh, Tourette's Trent Derby. Not only is that offensive, it doesn't work as a clue. Saying that, have you come up with anything for this week? What's the prizes? I'll read out the prizes. We've got. Who's the winner? The winner. Very lucky, Sandra Cassidy of Leon C. She gets all those great prizes. You know, we've actually had people emailing in saying. This is the worst Rockbusters ever, because it was too easy, it was boring. Oh. Uh, 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 this is just, uh, don't shoot the messenger. Oh, dear. Other people saying, um, it oh. really has run its course. Some people genuinely agree oh, with Ricky. Oh, Carl, this must hurt, mate. Stinging attacks on you. Um, some people just slagging you off generally, saying oh, you, win, you whinge all the time. It looks like Steve like was right when he, um, sort of like, poo-poos your ideas. So. When he, uh. When he wheeze on your so bonfire. Other, someone else, I swear to God, someone else emailed in and said, don't bother sending me the prizes, take them to a charity shop, or pawn them, give me the money, I'd rather have it. So I don't know what to say, Carl, I just wonder if it really has run its course now. Alright, well, well we'll see what you come up with next week, no. then. Let's, <laughs> see, let's see what you do, let's see what you come in with. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. About five to one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you'll be popping in with another hip-hop track. Yeah. Full of, uh, yeah. Full of effing and jeffing. Well, no, no, I won't, I won't bring it into you, I'll do it myself at home. Because obviously that makes oh, it easier. Oh, dear. Obviously you can't cope. Oh, dear. Are you actually gonna be here next week, or are you still gonna be in Cornwall? No, you see, there again, I'll be back, I'll be back in time. Oh. And in the, in the week, when I go to, you know, Cornwall, to see the monkey world. Yeah, you're two days past the monkey world. That still work. Yeah. <laughs> that still work? What? what you're you gonna monkey? interview some of the monkeys? What? I love stories. that. I love that. You, you were going, could a monkey live without bones? And so I'm going, Carl, shut the f- please, just look at the monkeys and eat your ice cream. And that's work, is it? What? 
Oh, well, no, so just go back to insults briefly. Go on. You know, you're saying. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I, uh, see that's... Goofy, that's no, not no, no, fair. no, because that's, that's what he said, it's in my head. I, what I, do you mean he said no, that? did he no, say that? No, no, I mean... When did you call me Goofy? No, he didn't. Okay. He said about what's in my head. Hey, no, when it's... Come on. Come off it. Don't what? Who's calling me Goofy? No. I'm not even Goofy. Goggle eyes, fair enough. No, yeah, but you I can sort your look out, I can't. But yeah. you know I can, how can I sort my look out? I'm not even Goofy, you've that's got, not fair. You've got the proper features. What? Just needs sorting out a bit. I can't help it if if my hair's not good. Who do you think's cooler to look at, Steve or the Chemical Brothers? Steve. Definitely, yes. You're absolutely right, Carl. And that's the first sensible thing you've said if, for a long time. If I was time. to work with Steve on on some music, yeah. If I had the choice, I think Steve would look better on a album cover. Really? Yeah. What would you do? Would you change him at all? To, what would you do with his I'd, image? I'd put him in the distance. So I. <laughs> just... I can't believe this is. This no, is just so you don't look as tall. That's doing you a favour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was on the, this is true, I was on the, uh, uh. on the tube, right, coming in to meet Gervais the other day, and I was wearing a suit and I, my mobile phone slipped out of my pocket and it landed on the seat, and I didn't realise this, and as I was about to get off, some bloke who was sat there, like an old guy, he picked up the phone, he went, Oi! Uh, Lanky, you dropped your mobile phone! <laughs> and I was like, well, I thank you for pointing out I dropped my phone, but did you have to do the lanky? But you knew who he meant. I bet you turned round straight away. <laughs> it worked. You knew who he meant, yes, Steve. But he's done you again. But I was the only up. person stood up. It was a fairly empty train. Was it? Was there any other lanky people there? No. Well then. And I was on my mobile phone, and I was chatting away to someone, and, uh, what can only be described as a prostitute, Go on. Stood on the street corner. Was she a woman that uh, gives you sex for money? Yes. That is a prostitute. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Go on. And as I was walking by, she said, do you want to buy sex? What a boys? No, you sure my... it wasn't a market trader giving six plums away? No, it was summer. definitely sex for a quid. No, it was definitely a prostitute. Yeah, and what annoyed me about it, what I wanted to pick her up on something, was the fact that I was on my mobile phone. <laughs> It's like, can you imagine? Who, who would I, I? What am I going to hang up? Sorry, Mum. Can I call you back? I've you know, you offer. know, you say you want me to meet more women, and you know, you sent me that thirty quid <laughs> exactly. for my birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Johnson. I'm really excited about the job. Can I call you back? I'm just going to negotiate with a whore. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, it was like it was just sort of, you could tell that she was clearly probably desperate for crack or a latest yeah. fix of smack. So she was literally she, the normal etiquette of prostitution. You know that they hang around, they show some thigh. <laughs> like, I've seen this in they films. Will, will ya? Yeah, they exactly. Will, yeah, 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 yeah. Take you out for a meal. That I know. Sort of thing. That had sort of gone out of the window, and yeah, she was just sure. there, desperate, running around. Did she the go out the window? Like because girl. that's <laughs> another thing they sometimes do, specialist exactly. ones. But I was yeah. shocked because I've never been uh, propositioned before like that. Really? In London, I was <laughs> weird, isn't it? Carl, thoughts? I. I think you'd be sort of approached a lot because they tend to <laughs> sort of go for people who look like they haven't got much chance. Sure. And I'm not being mean. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'll let you go back to it. In what way aren't you being mean? By saying that no, Steve, Steve, Steve knows is a little bit odd looking. <laughs> I don't think. Well, <laughs> no, he does. <laughs> Do you know, do you know yeah, before, no, no, but it's not whether what he thinks of his looks. You know. It's what he thinks of you. Talking about his looks on no, but it's Go it's on. like how you were talking before about you know your eyes are bad. <laughs> it's nature's little way of saying look, nothing to see here, right? <laughs> don't get that. I don't know what you mean. What but you when you look in the mirror and that they've gone look, he hasn't got the looks. Let's make his eyes bad, right? Yeah. Nothing to see here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. See, we're balancing I... it out, right? Yeah. And it's funny, right? Now we're on the topic. Sorry, sorry, right, Johnny Depp. Now hey, listen, <laughs> but. <laughs> My my chest is gonna burst at this but moment. All, whenever we go into this conversation, I always think to myself, Carl, do you know what you look like? <laughs> I I am gonna. <laughs> do you know, seriously, can I be honest with you? You look like you know if you've got like a balloon, a hot air balloon, right? <laughs> just a little balloon, like a party balloon. <laughs> if you drew a little face on it, right, and inflated it about halfway, that's what you look like. <laughs> right. I so. No, I've got player record. No, I don't want to get into this. Listen, it's too now, intense. Now, now you've you've got onto this. Let's just nip it in the bud now. I'll tell you something that I wasn't going to tell you because I think it was I don't want to hear it. I don't want to well, hear it. Right, it was on the tube. Right, well, I was. Someone told me they were on the tube. Mm. Right, and um, it uh, the, the tube pulled into a station. <laughs> right, and one of the women <laughs> saw the poster that's yeah. out at the moment with <laughs> you and Rick on it. Right, yeah. so this this woman apparently goes, uh, "Oh, look, there's uh, it's Ricky. Ricky's on the radio." Right, and uh, the other woman goes, "Oh yeah, d d don't you listen to it?" So she goes, "Oh, I didn't, I didn't know it was on the radio," and she goes, "Oh, look, look, because he didn't sound this bad." She's 
said, oh, look at that, look at that person he's with. So she goes, yeah, 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 yeah. She said, that's Steve. <laughs> she said, I'm kind of, I was sort of aware that he looked odd because Carl mentions it on the radio. Yeah. So, so it wasn't as much of a blow to me, but I can see how it was a bit of a shock to you. Yeah. So, uh, that's, that's, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. And that isn't me sort of telling this one to say anything. That was all happened without anybody else sort of bringing it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, was it- Sorry, you seem to be relishing this. Was it because of the little balloon story that made you- I, I honestly, Steve, I wouldn't have told you, but if you're gonna start, you know, having a pop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I can't just sit here and <laughs> take sure. it and that. No, no. I mean, all yeah. oh, mates. Yeah, it's just, uh, uh Yeah. Well, I mean, I was just mistaken yeah, for Johnny right. Vegas. Steve's got a story about that, if you wanna have a go at me. Well, you'd know, someone just thought you were a fat with a beard, which is true. Well, don't have a go at me because he said you looked- Well, you looked... started it. No, I didn't. Yeah, no, just, I didn't. You were milking it. You were I egging was, him I on. I was laughing. You were egging him on. <laughs> I sort of was. Yeah. But let's not, you know. Ooh, it's a good job you've got lots of good mates like Jonathan Ross you can go and hang out with. <laughs> don't need other friends. People who've helped you in your career. This is what the phone message he left me Wednesday on my mobile. But I just uh, is chatting about certain things that are going on at the moment. Uh, what new does need to know? Um, old Duncan, who mentions is my agent, and you know you you understand a few other things. But this is the sort of message I get from Carl, right? Windsor. Old messages. Right. Ten past twelve. Wednesday. Um, just getting loads of f people calling me all the time about. Sh Yesterday, DVDs signing for BBC London. I don't work there, but I've been dragged into that. I've got a woman on, uh, leaving a message from Talk PR, going on about, do you, do you want to go and see Pop Idol again? Right? They're just saying, uh, you and some listeners can go. So I'm sure you'll love that. I've got Jim Benner wanting you to introduce the tin buckets at the Astoria. So can, can you just like let Duncan know? That I'm, I'm doing his job whilst he's sat on his ass with his thumb firmly up his ass. Can you let him know that I'm running around like a here <laughs> sorting shit out for you? All right, see you later. <laughs> so, do you know what I mean? I know, but that's the kind of phone message he's leaving. That, but, do you remember but, who he was before but, you? But he's even with him. annoyed that he gets a phone call. I remember he got a phone call for you to do a voiceover and didn't yeah. pass it on. You missed a voiceover. That yeah. was thousands of pounds. No, I did, I did it, pass it on though. I told you. You I did. Said you said someone had phoned. Yeah. That's yeah. not good enough. But who's that? Well, she, she didn't say, and I didn't ask, but Of course she said! She didn't say. Rubbish. So you didn't take the number down? Just when she went, oh, can you tell Steve to call me? And you went, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just thought you'd know her already. I should have known, it was a woman, so I should have known. He's having a go, you see? Unbelievable. I don't know how it's gone back on me, you're the one who was picking on it. Yeah, exactly, I'm saying. I'm defending, why is he having a go but at he you? he never picks on Ricky, because he knows you are his bread and butter. <laughs> Seriously, do you know what I mean? The only reason he's got Mondays off is because you're still doing this show. Yeah. yeah. That's why he's scared of you, that's why he's like, he has a go at you on the phone, but he always picks on me because he knows, you know, I'm a pusher, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> he's scared of you. I can't believe, I don't know how it works. Is that true? Steve, I'm always sorting you out, I look after you. Mm. Sort you out with tickets, I sort get lager out. I've got you today, why well, are you picking on me? What do you mean you're sorting out tickets and lager, what's this? Right, whenever you want tickets. Yeah, yeah it's alright. I don't want to use this as like, moaning time and that, because yeah. I don't like to moan, I'm busy and that, right? <laughs> I've sorted you out tickets for gigs. Yeah. Right? Well, somebody doesn't even turn up to. Yeah. yeah we won't even go on about that. Yeah. Right? Lager. He was sorting out the cure, he complained it was boring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was that big drum of lager that yeah. you had, and you said, oh, put that in your room for me. Yeah. Because I don't want to carry it home. Right? You're lazy. So I said, all right, then I'll put it in my room. It goes missing, it gets nicked. <laughs> then you have a go at me because it got nicked. Yeah. I get you another one. You make me carry it around town for you for half an hour, then you say, oh, I can't be bothered taking it on, can you take it back to work for me? Yeah. Yeah. But, interestingly, this is like a year ago, so it's, it's, obviously, it's still, still pressing on you, Oh, hang it? on, and I forgot the one when we had an argument over 50p. <laughs> yeah, when we went out for a coffee. you didn't want to 50p back that you owed me. Uh, that was the d same day you'd given him about 40 quid worth of lager. <laughs> but, see, this is my problem, this was my point at the time. It's not the 50, 50p in terms of money is not what's important. The fact that you think you don't have to give me money back because it's only 50p, that was the point at stake. Mm -hmm. I, it's me who makes a decision, oh, don't worry about the 50p, not you, it's only 50p, I'm not gonna give it to you. Do you know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. gotta be rules, otherwise it's chaos, Carl. Come on, mate. Alright? I don't wanna fall out about no, it. No, it's not right. <laughs> 
Should we kiss and make up? Do you want that? Do you want that? It's all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, should we play a little record and come back to this, cos... I can't believe it started with you slagging him off, Rick, and I've ended up... I know. ...as the monster. I know. Bit of R.E.M. Yeah. Well, we, we, we're not gonna do, uh, Freak of the Week here. Okay. Right? Because we've, we've done quite a bit of that in the last twenty minutes, right? You've so we'll on Freaks, you think? Yeah. Sure. We'll just shift it a little bit. Okay. Uh, I don't like to keep saying, don't want people to be thinking we're sort of taking the mick out of anyone. <laughs> no. Right? Cos we're not about that. I feel that, like I can do a little bit of it because I work with, with you, Steve. Yeah. Right? <laughs> sure. It, it gives yeah. me that right. It's like a care worker. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like that thing of, you can't be homophobic cos I've got a couple of gay mates and sure, stuff. Sure, sure. It, I think it sort of gives me that edge. Yeah. Right? So, so you're not freakophobic cos you work with Steve? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, they, they, by, by, by that token, I should be able to sort of slag off, you know, the mentally ill. What do you mean? At least mentally handicapped. What, what starts on you? Um, mine changes. I'm on the edge. Oh, right. God. Okay. He even makes that complicated. Of course. He I even am. makes twaddle complicated. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, it changes depending what paper you read. Yeah. Alright, in theory. 23rd of September. So I think yeah. most of the time I'm a Virgo, I think. Oh. Well, well, I'll tell you. Write, write that down, uh, listeners, uh, 23rd of September, uh, and come round and give him the bumps. <laughs> Um, what, what I mean? Well, according to this, I mean, it, I, I mean, you've been criticising this, Rick. Sure. You've been saying that there's maybe not, not anything in the zone. Yeah, yeah well, on. hang on, let me just read the, something. On, the, uh, I'm, I'm, is this gonna change my mind? Well, Am I gonna eat my words? The typical Virgoan. Mm, words. Okay. The what? physical appearance of the typical Virgoan. Yeah. High forehead. That's not true. Cranium may seem too big in comparison with the face. Look at Carl, look at Carl. But how specific is that? Has an extremely large forehead. Has a high hairline. That's mm. not true though, is it? Maybe quite tall. What are the blokes like? Often has one foot turned in more than the other. What do they- they've just described Rain Man! What is that? How can I be specific? Well that's why it sounds like Carl! <laughs> <laughs> one, one foot turned in! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well have they even bothered doing one for you? Because there isn't many people who- Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Go on. What are you I, saying? I, I sort of think I'm fairly average looking, but I'm saying, have they wasted a page in that book for whatever you are? <laughs> <laughs> it started off me being dissing him and stuff, and you've been nice. Hang on a minute. I don't think you can be a Virgoan because it says uh, that they are normally quick, alert, and intelligent. <laughs> No, actually, I have to say, it says here, uh, behaviour and personality traits of the Virgoan, uh, uh, is an, as a child, is an excellent mimic, uh, can learn many things in a short time, yeah. not really true of you, is it? What, what, Re rarely like, questions what? authority, but frequently questions facts. Yeah. You never question facts. Yeah, you never question authority, he's <laughs> scared of authority. Yeah. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, you're usually trying, very, very upset if teased. That's true. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Hang on a minute though. Yeah. Can't take a bit of stick, too much depends, pressure. If you yeah. can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Yeah. Oh. What to teach a young Virgoan? Myths, fairy stories, make believe, daydreams, and how to use imagination should all be taught to young Virgoans. So they have plenty of magical moments to remember in their adult years oh. when they are often alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing my mind. I know. This is good stuff. So, this is really good stuff. All right. Well, let's see. What What are you? Uh, well, um, I don't, don't think we should talk about that. Yeah, let's, let's have a look. It says the Virgoan is- I love some of the specifics of this. Virgoan oh. is an employer. He's excellent as the boss of a small company. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> don't get him on a Tuesday. Yeah, He's probably stamp fun. collecting then. Yeah. Come on, he loves a bit um, of haddock. Okay, let me look at mine. Oh, oh that is good though, Carl, isn't it? That is you all over. I've changed your mind. It's brilliant. It's a real science. They've really put their work in with this one. Let me see, Sagittarius, Sagittarius, uh, Sagittarian is a happy, playful little clown. Little. Greets everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see, Sagittarius at home. Uh, He's only gonna read the good bits though, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. If that said, what, what can it say? Mm. Uh, have, they, have they done yours in sort of small print, cause you've got special eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that insult is, Carl. What kind of an insult is that? Well. He's up to that. Look at his face. <laughs> He's done me. Oh, oh dear. And come back to me. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Still arguing. This time about 
having help from your mum and dad. What do you think, Carl? No, I'm not. I don't want this to turn into some sort of wacky type of thing where we're pretending we're arguing. Yeah. Well, we're not pretending. We're not we pretending. Are you are. Arguing. Yeah, I know. I know what people will think we're messing about. Oh, right? I don't, wouldn't have thought so. We just need to. We can talk about it later. Sort it out. Hmm. Yeah. It's just that Carl's a little bit stressed. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stressed, but. And he doesn't really understand that, you know. So, you know, me and Steve have got lots of different jobs in the week. He's just got one job. Yeah. And we sort of rely on people getting messages to us, you know, as soon as they get them, you know, and not sort of deleting them from their phone selfishly. Yeah. Just things like that, you know, people being on the ball. Not just thinking about themselves all the time, not just thinking about number one. What do you think, Carl? Whatever. Do you know what I mean? Whatever. Don't get all maudlin again. Just have a little discussion. Yeah, this is the lawyer. Guess what? Think of this, you little slaphead twat. Um, apparently, <laughs> that's so in his ass. That's so in his ass. Right? Uh, apparently, women can get bald treatment on the National Health Service, but men can't. What do you think of that? Do you think that's fair? Is that a fact? It's a fact. We what? should point out that Carl is, uh, would you say balding? Yeah. Would that be fair? Well, either that or a wide parting. <laughs> <laughs> See? Strokes. Someday. Now, that was a better, better choice, wouldn't it, to start off with? Um, oh, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously. Steve Mitchell. No, come on, let's get my name right from now on. That, that novelty's worn off. What is it? Is it- Steve Merchant. Oh yeah, they, yeah. that's the wrong one, isn't it, Mitchell? The Guardian got it wrong, it's Steve Merchant. And the more I say Mitchell, the more people are thinking- Exactly, it might be Mitchell. It might be Mitchell. Oh god, sorry Dave. Um, <laughs> but Carl wanted to start off with the stereophonics. Oh, loser. Cause it was a newer track. And Carl now, we've made him what he is, he was nothing when Nobody. we found him. He was right? like work experience. And now he's going, oh, so we should start off with the stereophonics. I'm going, Trying oh, to tell you what to do, If right? I want anyone's opinion, I don't. <laughs> Basically. But he'd probably come to me, I imagine, would he? <laughs> before, I'd be the first person. Before Carl, yeah. I'd consult you, Steve. Thank so you. just keep it, just cause he uh, was in a, what is it, pill yeah, he's making mobile music. Describe, it? I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to this. I mean, I literally can't wait, should we do it now? Well, I'm tempted to save it cause I just want to mention to people, um, that, uh, they should be very excited. Because, uh, it's gonna be Carl's special night tomorrow. You excited, Carl? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, yeah, um, uh, me and Steve, cause we were nominated, we get a guest. For the BAFTA uh, Awards. Um, and it's, uh, it doesn't say guest, it actually says, um, you know, uh, partner. So I'm taking, um, my partner. And, uh, Steve's taking Carl. Yeah. But what Carl doesn't realise is, you will have to pretend you're his partner, otherwise you yeah. wouldn't be we'll able to- Yeah, we'll have to hold says, hands when says, got is, the red is this your, is this really your partner? It's not just a guest. They have That's to- That's how it is. And either we go in like that or we can't get in. You have to, you just have to be with him when you go up there. I mean, you have to, uh, d does yeah, he have to- hold you should, we should hold hands, but I think what we should do is just to make sure that there's nothing at all that, like, is gonna go wrong, we should just do a little kiss. Just like- and just I'll, I'll, I'll be seen sort of like cheek to cheek, just to show them that, yeah. you know, you're not- he's, he's Like not Elton just John getting, and David He's not just yeah. getting his mates in for a free meal, you are actually partners. No, I'm not- I'm not for that. Why not? Well- Because we know we're not actually gay. No, but- but yeah, but so you- it's not a problem. You've come out of it looking quite good, cause you've got a good looking fella. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm- I'm meant to look like, you know, I mean- uh, I'm not gay, <laughs> but if I was, I don't think I'd go for your thing. Oh, he's done you, Steve! It's turned on you again! I cannot believe- We were trying to get in- Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I have got the cream of London's totty <laughs> phoning me up trying to get an invite to the BAFTAs, yeah. right? We have very graciously asked you if you would like to come along. Well, that yeah. worries me even more. That you've got women calling you up. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. Carl, I can't choose between them. If I let one of them down, I'm gonna- they're gonna destroy yeah. them. Is they, yeah. they'll, they'll be- they'll be ruined, their yeah. lives will be ruined. It's better to, for me to take you and not, you know, ruin the lives of any of those poor when, women. When- when he told them he was yeah. taking you, it was like a scene from Graceland. So there was just like- There women, was weeping. They were crying, like- It was horrible. Hundreds of them. And really? he just went- and I got he, upset. He just had to say, look, just chill out, bitches, didn't you? I did, I just said, you know, you're all my hoes, but yeah. I can't choose between you. So I'm taking Carl. So I'm taking Carl. You know he gets- he could get you a discount frocks. No, I had a letter from the people that there's a- no. Now listen, Carl, there's an organisation that sponsors the BAFTA Awards yeah. in terms of clothes and fashion. They sent me a letter, they said your partner, they've not specified the sex, they've said your partner can come along and yeah. choose an outfit. Now I suspect, by the look of it, it is a woman's outfitters. I'm thinking we could get you a lovely trouser suit. Well, you have it a may look suit, feminine, right, but I think people will be fooled. It'd just, it just be a little bit roomy in the hip and that probably now on the shoulders, but you're a bit skinny. Why don't you take it? Because it's a lot of an insult. And maybe just some pearls as well. <laughs> 
Be lovely. Wouldn't you, wouldn't well, you, uh, I haven't got anything sorted to wear yet. See, you're slagging me off, you're likely to end up going in a tracksuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I know what Steve's like, he is tight, right? He's, well. he's, he, no, he is. <laughs> and you know that, don't you, Steve? Financially, I mean, I'm not, you mean? Well, no, I mean, just the way you are, you're very sure. sort of, you know, you, you're not, you're not wasteful with your money. I'm careful. <laughs> no, I'm not wasteful, absolutely right. No, no, but to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look come after on, the pennies, the pains will take care of themselves. All right? <sighs> Simple to remember, good advice. Yeah, all right? but the thing is, right, um, I know that I took the mickey out of you for, like, you know, the way you look and stuff. Sure. Right? Well, I'm right back at you. <laughs> but the thing is, you can't help that. Absolutely. But I'll tell you something that women don't like. Sure. And it's fellas who are tight with the money. Sure. I'm not- I'm not frugal with money with ladies. I'm frugal with money with you. <laughs> well, I've I- have got no reason to splash money out on you. I've never seen you splash money out. Well, you've never been out with me. Have you ever- have, Steve, have you ever splashed out on a lady? Um, no, but I hope to one day. <laughs> the right lady. <laughs> Play a record. I'm not going at the moment. I'm not going, and I'm desperate to see him. Man, I mean, he's, you know, he's going to do a great concert. It's mm. his only one in, in London. I can't believe that being on the radio, being on XFM, you know, the, the listenership's going up. Apparently, mm. I can't believe I can't get a ticket. I c I've asked Carl. He's done nothing. He's done nothing. Oh, God, no, 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 Carl, Carl had a very good point. Nothing. Carl, tell what you said when he was whinging no, in the break. No, but first of all, whilst you're moaning, you also asked in the week for a badly drawn boy album. Yeah. You got in today. Yeah. There's one there for you. Well, yeah, yeah. but it's Ian and Yang. And it's Carl. like, yeah, but I don't, you know, Carl, what's Steve ever done for you? That's what you got to ask yourself. What has Steve ever done for you? Well, he took me to the BAFTAs. Yeah, but only because no one else would probably want to go with you. <gasps> <gasps> I can't believe that. What is I this? I do not believe that. Oh, Steve, I'm going to stitch you up now, Carl, and it's in a nice way. And don't worry, it won't be too bad. He won't take it too bad. Carl sent me a little text message today. Right. Um. No. No. Oh, don't. what is this? Um. I. Right. Okay. Okay. That you know I'm in a very frail mood at the moment. No, no, I'm you're like this, Bruce. This is funny because me and St uh, me and him have been like sending uh, trivia back and forth to each other, which is another point, right? I sent him. Oh well, I'll get to that in a minute. I, I thought he'd really be amazed with um. Right, well, while I'm you're right. fiddling, if you can make my dream come true uh, to go and see Bruce Springsteen tomorrow, then give us a call on the usual yeah, number. Yeah, but like I said, Steve. What? Right? It's- it's- wouldn't be- right, you just said when the song was on, can't believe it, right, we work at XFM and I can't get tickets for Springsteen, right? Yeah. Mm. We work in radio, we should get tickets. Mm. Right, now think Which of I'm the amount- Which I'm willing to pay for. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. think of the- yeah, but if it's sold out, it's sold out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but that's just something they say. Right, that's just what they say, is it? Right, so everybody on local radio stations say, do you know, I, I like that Bruce Springsteen, I, I, I want a free ticket, right? So another say- I tried to phone, I phoned for an hour and a half, I couldn't get through. Not long enough, I put the enough. hours in. Not long enough. Not long enough. What are you talking <laughs> about, put the hours in? No. Right, so another <laughs> 400 people turn up at the gig, they cram them all in, there's people being crushed, you know, they've paid the money early, they were up early that day when the- when the phone lines were open, whilst you were probably sleeping and that. So they're dedicated and they're the ones at the front getting crushed. What? Would you Why mind that be crushed? happy if you were there getting crushed? I don't mind- I'll sit at the side of the stage and watch him. Yeah, but- I the, don't mind. But everyone will say that then. And then what? before you know it, yeah. no one can see anything because no, you're Carl's on the stage. No, right on this one. Leave, right, it. Leave, leave it. Read, right, I'm gonna give you this here. I'm now handing over my mobile phone to Steve to read the- you can see it's from Carl at the top, but just read it out as you scroll down. Just read it out loud. Is this a text message from- Yeah, this is a text message to me from Carl. Read it out. To see at night as well as an owl, you would need eyes the size of grapefruits. If only Stephen could turn his head right round as well. I- Carl, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> what- what upsets me most, Carl, right, is not the fact that you've been slagging me off behind my back. <laughs> it's the fact that you've got the cheek to come on here and moralise because you've failed to get me tickets and make a dream come true. You've come on here trying to pass the buck and say that it's a health and safety problem, when mm. in actual fact it's a Carl it's Pilkington problem. Look at that, see that, I've got it in a I can't- I'm devastated, I'm devastated, you I know, know, I- didn't- and then- I didn't felt left by a record. I just- I'm upset. I should've eaten this banana. What's the number? It's uh, 08700 800 1234. But if it's sold out, Steve, it's sold out. A bit of a classic, eh? REM. I bet if Ricky wanted to go, it'd be fine. I'm sure someone could sort it out then. Who? Oh, if Ricky Gervais wants to go, then I'm you can going. Come. Are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you want some tickets, though? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you went in. There was George Best, one of your footballing heroes was there, a that load of other good. big names. We- you sat there in a prime position, you came backstage with a load of other big names. 
Hey, you had a lovely bit of grub. You were filming this thing for the DVD we were making. That's you. That's you, a cameraman on our DVD. And yet you think, oh, and you, now you look grumpy because you had a couple of pints and you oh, I can't believe so it. So tell us why you didn't enjoy it, because the ceremony, what didn't you enjoy about that? Far it was interminable, wasn't it? Far too long. Wasn't it awful? Three so boring. I'm hours. I'm sorry. I thought you were going to say something. Really? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Three hours. Yeah. Um, I mean, I suppose for you two, at least, you know, you were gonna get something. Sure. Yeah. But, <laughs> with me, it's like, I mean, I've never graduated or anything, so. Have you not? I'm trying to think of, of a situation. Basically, I sat there for three hours knowing that I'm not gonna get anything out of the night. Yeah. Right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> no did you, sorry, me. when we invited you and you said yes, did you think you were up for an award? <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> I thought we were going to be sat round tables, having a nice yeah. bit of food, yeah. whilst people are going up there winning awards. Yeah. But three hours of the same thing over and over again. I mean, if a film's three hours in the cinema, yeah. you go, well, it's long, but, you know, I wonder how it's going to end. Yeah. But this was just like the same <laughs> thing over and over again. Some guy going up, thanks a lot, cheers for the bit of brass. And mm. then going down, sitting down, the same thing over and over again. Mm. I wouldn't, I, honestly, right? I'd say it was one of the worst things I've ever had to do. <laughs> Christ! No, I enjoyed the night afterwards when we did have a bit of lamb and a nice bit of veg and that. That was yeah. all right and I went home and I was happy and I got the, the little freebie bag that you're talking about that we gave yeah. away. Yeah. Um, which wasn't much good stuff in it. Oh, all right. No, what, Suzanne, what would you have done right? on that Saturday night? Suzanne what would you have done if, or the Sunday night rather, what would you have done had you been at home? I would have stayed in with Suzanne, right, watching telly, having a nice bit of pate on toast or something, cup of tea, watching 24, but instead, I had to buy an expensive suit so I didn't show you up, <laughs> right? This is what I did. Yeah. How much did you spend on your suit? Well, in total, right, because, you know, the shoes and the suit and the shirt and the tie, it was about 600 quid. <laughs> that's the most expensive evening ever. <laughs> that's, well, that's what I'm saying to you. And the daft thing is, it's dark in there, I don't know why you've got to wear a nice suit. You can't, you can't wear a track suit, for <laughs> goodness sake. In there. Oh, oh, oh. No, just a shirt and that. It doesn't oh. make you a better person wearing a suit. No, doesn't no, make you a better right. person. No, we're not that, claiming it made you a better person. No, well, that annoyed me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it was an experience, isn't it? That's why I went because you think if I didn't go, if I would have said to you when you invited me, no, Steve, I don't want to go, then I would have never known, right? Yeah. And yeah. I've, I've, uh, that, that's my sort of thing in life, right? Yeah. If yeah. something comes up, you should take it, even if. You're not gonna like it, it's a bit of an experience. Right. And you know what he said to me? I phoned him up because we had to meet up. Yeah. And obviously he had to pose as my, uh, gay lover. Yeah. He had to get in, right? Yeah. He phoned me, what do you said something to me like, I bought a suit, I'm looking good. He said, I'm looking good. People will think, how on earth did he end up with that good looking guy? <laughs> so he got into the yeah. role. That <laughs> was what he said to me. He getting into it. Such an insult. Fire record. Do, do, do you not care about the job? I mean, I've got to ask because, you know what I mean? If I was in charge, I'd worry about your motivation or. Because we. Yesterday, we were trying to work out what you enjoyed doing, and we got to, uh, Manchester United and moaning. And that is, that is the two we came I, up with. I don't with. know where you get the moaning thing You're from. always whinging. About what? Everything. Wh when? When did the last have a moan? Uh, just before we came on air. Right, and why was that? <laughs> um, I don't know, I can't remember. Because well, we were in good mood, we were in a good mood, me and Rick. I'll tell you why. Go on. Because you brought a song in at ten to one. Yeah. With a load of effing and jeffing in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And saying, can you edit this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's your job. <gasps> you could have brought it in yesterday. No, I couldn't. Why not? I hadn't thought of it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but why, but why, but why are you whinging? That's your job. And I didn't come in ten minutes before, it was a good twenty minutes before. It just took you ages because you were whinging and moaning. Mm. To even get started. Uh, been very quiet week. Uh, been checking, uh, I was looking in books last night and stuff. Uh, so is there any monkey news? I, I've I've got some, but just because it's not that good, something else I found out that I thought I'd share with you. Go on. I was looking in the Guinness Book of Records, right, because I thought they'll have something in there about monkeys or something, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's a little monkey, I think it lives in Asia, right? Uh, there's loads of them live in Asia. Might and, just be travelling, but yeah. And, um, something I found out, I don't know if they've got it right. And that's why I want to bring it up. Uh, apparently, it's the mammal, right, that's got sort of the, the pointiest eyes. Eyes that pop out of the red. Steve.
Now, <laughs> the thing is, right? <laughs> I thought that's interesting. Yeah. Apparently, it's, it's, it's the biggest with the sort of goggle eye type thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, go on. Apparently, they, they come out of the red, um, 1.6 centimetres. 1.6 centimetres? What, you mean they protrude? Yeah. Of the through from the head at 1.6. Okay. What, how, how long? Have you got a ruler, Rick? Right? <laughs> <laughs> 1.6. I'd say I'd be a little bit annoyed if the monkeys beat me. <laughs> well, I don't think it has. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Is there anything we can... I mean, what's 1.6? Oh, can you... <laughs> It's about drop your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh, well, oh, about three quarters of an inch. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Have they got it right or what? <laughs> Maybe I should come down to Monkey World with you next week. Uh, uh, so anyway, so that's that's not the monkey <laughs> news. That's just something that cropped up. And <laughs> sure, <laughs> I do know. Once when we were playing pool. In the office, I think Lucy was your partner. Yeah. It was me and Ash versus you and Lucy. And then um, you were having trouble because his glasses kept slipping down. So <laughs> Lucy pushed his glasses up, his nose, but the glasses touched his eye. <laughs> Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he started it. He started it. Well, you're the one who joined in. <laughs> no, I know, and I feel, I'm, I feel bad now. Yeah. <laughs> he makes me nervous when he goes, yeah. It's like, play record. No, I'm just trying to think about which part of your fat, middle-aged physique I can pick on. <laughs> the tits would be a good Yeah, stuff. yeah. Oh, the belly. Sure. <laughs> oh, what do you think of that? <laughs> oh, that, that's, what is that? Do you know when I left the pub in a bit of a mood, because yeah. I, I just fed up with not getting anything done? Yeah. Walking down the road, I was thinking, how can I get out of this? How can I stop having to work with them? I'm thinking, I wonder if I, if I leave, I wonder if they'll be funny and they'll go, and then my boss will be giving me stick, and thinking, how long, how much notice have I got to give out? How, how, and all this is going through my mind, I'm walking home and I got in, said to Suzanne, I'm sick of it. She's going, you need to do it when I get a new kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but how big does the kitchen need to be? I was saying, do we need a big kitchen? Can we get a small one? Have we got enough for a small kitchen? Do we need so many cupboards? Can we just have wood instead of steel? All this, try to get out of doing this. Yeah. It's always, just, I always feel like, uh, you know, because I, I like to think that I'm not perhaps as bad as him. Yeah, no, you annoy me in different ways. Like Thanks. what? How does he annoy you? Well, stuff, stuff that, you know, I, I come up with ideas, say yeah. Cheap as Chimps, yeah. uh, Rock Busters springs yeah. to mind, yeah. uh, 15 like Taiwan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> 15 Taiwan. Let's just remind people what 15 Taiwan was. It was a little feature that I wanted to give a run, you know, give it a little run, see if people like it. Uh, the premise being? No, there's no premise, it's just a title. No, we were gonna get 15 sort of ornaments, you'd explain them, and then people would call <laughs> up and say, that oh, I'm from yeah. Taiwan. <laughs> Carl, you just explained why I didn't think that was a good idea. Yeah, By explaining the good- the No, so, you know, the funny thing is, Steve, right, I was walking down Regent Street on Monday, Walked past one of these big stores, right, and they've got all famous quote, quotes on the windows, right, yeah. and one of them was something like, an absurd idea is often a great idea. Yeah. Do you know who said that? Go on. Einstein. Yes. Which made me wonder, if you were his mate, would he ever have done E equals MC squared? <laughs> or would you have said, don't bother with that, it's not gonna work? <laughs> Because that's all you seem to do, everything I come up with, yeah. you put down. Yeah. Well that's one thing, he's negative, right, I don't know, I don't know why, I don't okay. know why he's, he is. What he, else? He messes me about, I get him concert tickets for stuff, and, yeah. and you say, oh, I didn't bother going. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is annoying. You come in, you know, five minutes to go with tracks that need editing. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. little bag, yeah. that bag that was free. Yeah, you got a free bag today, an yeah. XFM little rucksack thing. Yeah. yeah. You were like, oh, what's this, what's this rubbish? Yeah. Ricky said, I'll have it, they're great. You yeah. said, no, I want it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so, free, I need it. Yeah. Um, I'll give that as a well, gift or something. So, so, I mean, I think on reflection, Steve is probably a little bit more annoying than me. Mm. <laughs> I, I won't go that far. <laughs> you are, you are annoying. If I had to go away for a week somewhere, yeah. if it was a quiet place- so you are again, aren't you? That's two holidays you had this week, this year, I mean. If it was a busy place, I'd probably go with you, cos people, do you know what I mean, staring at me all the time and that if I'm walking around with Steve. <laughs>
No, I'm just... <laughs> Can I draw up a list of reasons I don't like you, Paul? Just being honest. Well, I'll take it, because the list of reasons I don't like you is incredibly long. I'm getting longer. Just saying. Do you want another snack? Okay. Oh, I genuinely, I, I really, it does frustrate me that I don't get any allowance it for being count casual. as a disability. Well, it does count. No, it doesn't. It's not a disability being six foot seven. But There's how can you explain, for instance, you know, travelling on a bus the, or a coach? There's some the things only I can see. Uh, um, people look at, I've, I've seen people stare at you. Um, but they stare at me because I've been on the telly. Wasn't that a disability? Are that people being recognised? Yes, but you could avoid that by not being on the telly. It's your choice. This yeah. is my point. It's your choice. Yeah. It's the same okay. as the big fat people. And it's their yeah. choice. It's a different sort of stare, isn't it? I've been there. Yeah. When, you know, the sort of stare that you get in the sort of Steve's, the sort of stare. Well, Steve obviously gets. I'm gonna, sorry Steve, but I'm gonna, you know, follow up this inquiry. What do you mean, Carl? No, so I'm just saying it's more of a stare of, of fear than, <laughs> like, with you, they go, oh, it's him. Yeah, go on. Whereas with you it's more like, Jeez. <laughs> Where's the monkey news? Yeah. Um, before we uh, carry on with anything, I should just tell you, we're, we're on the subject of emails. There's one emailer we're always looking forward to hearing from. Dickers! Richie Anderson! Anderson. Dicky Ducky Doo! Richard Anderson. Thanks for emailing. He's, and, uh, my, uh, he's my biggest fan He's now. one of the biggest he fans. He absolutely loves me. But, not afraid to offer some constructive criticism. Go on, That's what's the he great said? thing about Dickie. And from Anders this week, he says, Ricky, I'm lazy, I talk nonsense, I'm badly organised, and I believe in ghosts. Can I have a job working on your show? <laughs> um, uh, possibly, uh, Anders, maybe send in a CV. Or email uh, a CV. He's put a little bit of all of us in that, hasn't exactly. he? <laughs> oh, well, ask him if he's a goggle-eyed freak, Steve. All right, calm down. Well, no, I didn't mean. No, there's no need to get insulted. No, I didn't necessarily no mean nasty. you. No did need I? to get nasty. Well, also, I was thinking about that actually, Steve. Oh God. <laughs> Just talking of, of the old. Uh, what? What? Talking of the what? No. Do you know, like? This better be you, good. No, you don't have that many girlfriends and. What? What do you mean, Carl? Why are we on this? I wasn't- I was defending you in the whole monkey discussion. Come on, what's oh, your point? No, what's your point? What's your point? No, what's the point? What's the point? I just was thinking... <sighs> if there was an infinite number of Steves? <laughs> <laughs> you're not- you- you know, you're an odd-looking fella. Uh, come on, Carl, get to the- No, you know I know that. I've told you that loads of times. What do you quick. mean, you know I know that? Well, there's no point pretending anymore. <laughs> Steve! I'm- I'm flabbergasted. But also, you don't like spending money. Huh? He's mean and weird looking! Valentine's Day. No. <laughs> I'm gonna- oh! Are you sort of, oh. uh, oh. Oh. you know- You've got to love him though, haven't you? What- what are you happier with? The fact that no girls like you enough, right? <laughs> this is meant- this is really mental! Or, are you happy because you don't have to spend any money on a card for someone? Which a little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's have so let's have more monkey news. What well, have we got? No, we've got a we've got so, so much to get into this show. Insults. We don't stupidity. need the insults. I think we've got enough. We don't need the insults. Yeah, there's no more insults. No what more insults. What angers me with Carl is you know he's been planning that. No, I haven't. I, I was well, I was thinking about it on the way in because Valentine's Day is coming up and I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> right. Condoms. You bought your girlfriend a box of condoms for Christmas. I don't think you can ever go at me. <laughs> to no, be fair. No, but I don't just treat her on Valentine's. I'm always. Do you know what I mean? You don't even treat her on Valentine's. <laughs> you don't even treat her at Christmas or on her no, birthday. When do you treat hang her? Hang on a minute. Why the cotton picking minute there? Oh, uh, why I order? <laughs> what? Wait a minute. What was that? Tiffany Dog. I treat your girlfriend better than you, <laughs> and I've only met her twice. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Wilberton, uh, hello, it's Dr. Hanrahan. Um, Barry Sheen has just passed away and you go, oh dear. Um, yeah, bad news and good news. Um, do you want his face or? Do you want his face? Does Suzanne go out with you, like, for charitable reasons? <laughs> I love the fact that she encourages you. Oh, she, you. She was saying about Tom Cruise and I was like, oh. You know, she said, you know, he's not a bad looking fella or whatever. So, well, what she's saying is, Carl, is there any chance you could go and get a different face? Maybe something like Tom Cruise would yeah, be but good. Then, then I was saying, right, first of all, he's got to be dead and he's not. <coughs> but if he was, and you had that done, would you feel like. People were looking you at you on the tube. Well, no, like, say if the people who made Mission Impossible said, well, what, I do a third one. 
<laughs> would I then- would I be in my right to say, well, I don't wanna do it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be offensive, Carl, but your girlfriend could do a lot better than you. <laughs> I, I don't know what I you're thinking. I love the idea this whole conversation about you with Tom Cruise's face and then get off with a film. But why, get... why does she have conversations like this with you? There's no on last night. There's no on the telly. I the love chat. it. Uh, what should we talk about? What about uh, getting a new face? <laughs> Oh dear, I was, oh that cartoon. Um, if you don't know what Carl looks like, there's a cartoon that was in last week's heat, isn't it, that I drew it on the website. What's, what's it going for now, bid? I think it's at about, uh, 225 quid at the moment. And what do they have to do to bid for it? Uh, just, just email in and I'll pass it on to the website people. I know why Heat put it in. It's cause the editor, Boyd Hilton, looks a little bit like you, doesn't he? Sort of my ugly brother. <laughs> He's probably listening and he says nice things about you. Yeah, he can still say nice things, but I bet he knows deep down. You know if you're good looking or not, don't you? <laughs> I can't believe Come it! Come on, Steve. Steve. I mean, what it's do you going, think? It, this is going, <laughs> this is going crazy, you know, Carl. I don't know. You, you're just the insults are flying left, right, and centre. You've got no limits. You've just gone crazy. You've just gone wild. You're spotting around just because you look like Tom Cruise. I think it's because he's been hanging out with Christian O'Connell. Yeah. And they're both thinking, yeah, we're Co a couple of media players. Yeah. Too big for their boots. Yeah, not scared. Although he's scared of Christian. No, he's terrible. He's scared of Christian in here because he's not allowed to do monkey news. No, because yeah. Christian wants to do it. He's scared of him. I'm not saying that, right? <laughs> Christian. <laughs> Waiting for By the way, Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. So, a few more shows. And then I, I, I hope Sony are happy. Mm. They should encourage, you know, we've only been radio, you know, a couple of years. Exactly. Just you encourage young, ta you encourage young talent yeah. like you. Yeah. Instead of giving it to Radio 1 and Radio 2 mm. and... The old war horses. We just had a quick email. I wonder if you can answer this. It's James from NW1. He says, Ricky, is Carl gonna be on this week's show? Please let me know as I may listen if he's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> sadly, oh, he is here. Oh I mean, dear. people are already turning against you, Carl, because they've seen what's happened. Yeah. I think they've probably realised that we've I think we gave you too much. Enough. I think, exactly. I think we've got a spoiled sort of kid in our hands. It's sort of like, you know, we, we knew, we knew how bad he was, but we were trying to sort of bring him out of his shell a little bit. Yeah. Encourage, you've got to encourage sort of, um, children like Carl. Well, yeah, exactly. To sort exactly. of fend for themselves. Mm. Um, but, uh, I like the fact that Dickie Anderson had that wonderful rant. It, I mean, it was an articulate email, it was quite long, and he must have typed it immediately. I'm thinking, because he's a fan of the show and he, he thinks I'm a, you know, a genius, we need a PA. Sure. Don't we? Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon he'd come and work for us? Um, well, he can't be any worse than what we've already got. <laughs> I um, know. You know. So, there you go then, we're giving up, we're giving up radio. We're gonna concentrate on television. Carl's gonna probably go back to what, your little, just doing your well, sound. The thing I won a silver for at the Sony's. Funny that, mm. isn't it? Oh, you won a silver, did you? I got a silver, yeah. Oh, yeah, doing, what was that for? for doing the proper job that I do here in the week. Well, well no, it's two of you for a start. Yeah. Well, there's three of us. Can't even get a bronze. Now, who's the weak link? <laughs> right? Well, a bit weird, isn't it? Let's get. Let's look. Let's get, let's not argue. We haven't got many shows to do. To be fair, though, this this show is, is. I think it's more to do with the fact that you talk on this show that has brought us down. Right, I haven't said anything hardly today. No, well, this is an award-winning show potentially. <laughs> we'll add this one in for yeah. next year. <laughs> oh. If we could just keep stum, we might have a chance. All right. Well, coming up, right? Come let's on. put it behind us. Okay. Let's draw a line under it. Well, Here we are, Lynch. We're back. XFM 104.9. Carl had to leave early last week, but, um, you, can you stay to the end this week, mate? Or... Yeah. Yeah? You don't, you don't need another holiday. Oh! Oh, he's started already. I mean, you Steve's know, made you look like a bit of a twat already. <laughs> and it's no. only five past one. But the only reason you don't go on holiday is because you have to spend money. <laughs> oh, and he's gone straight back! Well, he's gone straight back! <laughs> I can't come back to that. <laughs> oh, it's just, dear. it's just, uh, dynamite. It's just absolute, that was, that was well, serious. Last holiday, the he had, last holiday Steve had, he, he sort of found a third world country so he could live like a king mm. for a week. It was Cuba, wasn't it? Going to Cuba, amazing. You can leave, you can rule, almost rule the place. <laughs> Who went for Castro, I'd have been in charge. Kind of cash <laughs> I was flashing around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they do anything for a dollar over there. It's extraordinary, literally. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Definitely, and I went to Kenya so, before that. So, so he thought to the prostitute, said no. Mm. You were going. <laughs> yeah, well, it was two dollars. I mean, I'm not made of money. <laughs> well, we went, I went out with a drink with Carl in the week, and, uh, 
we went to uh, a restaurant, didn't we, Carl? Good night. And we sat there, and next to me, when Carl came, next to me was, uh, um, what's his name? Ross Kemp. And, uh, he was sitting there, and I saw Carl, and I, I tapped him on the shoulder, Ross Kemp, and I, was, uh, and I pointed to Carl and him, and I said, it's nice to see you two back together again. Nice. And Carl was horrified. But Carl didn't know that I'd already spoken to him before Carl arrived. Yeah, so yeah, was, yeah, I thought yeah. it was okay. I thought I could break the ice because I'd met him before. Sure. So he just thought I was insulting him. And in the week we were talking about his head, his little head, weren't we, Carl? And Carl suddenly stopped the conversation and said, If I had hair, what would we be talking about now? <laughs> I think you had enough of everyone talking about it. And he looked good though. He had it, it's, it's a special little do. He had it sort of, you know, cropped a little bit more. I like it when he's just freshly had it done. Mm. Do you like, yeah. has, has that ever happened to you, Steve, when you- if you're somewhere, say if you sat somewhere, does someone sort of, you know, is he anyone else who you look like, or <laughs> would you say you're a bit of a one-off? <laughs> I love these two! But, I, I, <laughs> but to be <laughs> fair- It's <laughs> like it! But to, no, but, to be fair, uh, he seems to be having a go at me an awful lot more than I do at him now. I mean, he just starts it, you know, he I just think, starts it out I, of nowhere. I th yeah, I think- I think his is sort of a get back for the way you treat him as a producer, not, you know- But he's not a producer! <laughs> If he produced the show, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a reason to criticise, but... Uh, I think this is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, seriously, I mean, it really was me though, because, you know, it started as a joke, but now it's just, it's abuse. Yeah. It got annoyed at Heat because it said Carl's producer, well, not so much a producer, as just a bald mank. And he went, yeah. can they say that? Yeah. Can they say that? See, that's a magazine, an independent publication has identified what exactly it is you do. Yeah. There we go then, come on, bring it on, because here we go, he's looking at me, I know he's thinking, he, no, I can hear the cops. No, I'm not, I'm not thinking anything. It's true. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that is true, never <laughs> a true word, play a record. Yeah. <laughs> me and Steve were having a little meeting yesterday over lunch about, you know, planning stuff for the show, and uh, Gary Kemp came up to me, started having a little chat about old times, and uh, I went, oh yeah, as he went away, Steve said, right, think of this, he said, Rick, don't take this the wrong way. Remember that sentence, don't take this the wrong way. So there's a right way and a wrong way I could have taken this comment. He went, nodded to sort of Gary Kemp and went, he's aged better than you. I went, well how could I take that the wrong way? Yeah, it's uh, not offensive. No. Well the, the point is this, he, he does, because he didn't know me twenty years ago, so he's actually saying, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, he looks better than you do. Yeah, well he does. But why say that, Carl? What? Did you really say that? Yeah, although, can I just go, just backtracking for a second, I love the fact you said you bumped into Gary Kemp and you reminisced about old times. What old times did you share with Gary Kemp? Well, no, Kemp? he came up and said, did we drop the pops together? I went, no, I did razzmatazz. He said, oh, we did razzmatazz. I think he was thinking, had he ever met me before? But he, he hadn't, because we hadn't, that's what I meant. Yeah. 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 And, uh... But if you had to make an objective analysis... I, you know, I wouldn't, I think that's out of order. Sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, you're always slagging me off, but apparently no, you, you no, can't no, do, well, you can't make a value judgment on something else. No. On, on <laughs> well, because you're, you know, you're morally all over the place, you don't know, you're, you know, you don't know where you're coming or going. Believe it. Yeah. Believe it. Sure, believe you should it. do what I say about you, behind your So, are you, would you say you're better looking now than you were, or? <laughs> than I'm what? W would you say you're better looking now than you were? Than I was when? Well, like, like, you know, have you aged well? Yes. You've aged well? Yeah, I've kept my looks. Oh. <laughs> 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 bit of dando? <laughs> Better than Dana, this would be lovely, yes. Look for sunshine. Now, it's intriguing to me because here's a film called Freaks, featuring real life freaks, and you're sort of a bit nonplussed by it. Just because it wasn't, because it's built up. If you call a video Freaks, you've got to make sure that there's some good stuff on there. Yeah. What were you disappointed about? Was it that? Because there was a few things on it, right? There was a woman who said she was half man, half woman, and it's like, well, you're not, are you? It was just like she had some makeup on, I thought, well, that's rubbish. And then there was a woman who could eat using her feet. That isn't that freaky. Do you know what I mean? If she's not hungry, she looks normal. Oh, yeah. And that's when I was thinking, <laughs> I mean, I'm not being, not being, right, Steve, you know I'm not being funny. Oh, here we go. No, 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 but I'm, I'm just saying, if that woman wasn't eating and you were sat next to her, in that film, yeah, I'd probably be sort of drawn to you more than her. I'm not. I, I know you hate me saying it, but there's no point sort of pretending. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oi, Mutley, what you what are you sniggering about? <laughs> that, that, that face. <laughs> well, you you mean there were, there were things in it that were less 
What are you saying? I'm just saying. Play a record. No. Seriously, I'll slap you. I'm gonna slap you live on air. Yeah, but you always go. I'm gonna. Sl I'm slapping you live oh, on air. I swear to God. Right, play a song then. Well, there's the best band in Britain, in my opinion. Mm, big words. The Darkness, growing on me. On XFM 104.9, on Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Have you got the album? And already, they've had an argument. Yes. Well, I, I mean, I don't know whether we need to cheapen the show by discussing it, but no. I asked for a particular track. Uh, Carl is the producer, and he failed to get it for me. He's failed to get it for me. He's failed to bring it up from the record library. Completely failed in his mission. He needed to get two records, and he failed to get one of them. A 50% error rate there. Yeah, but like I said, I looked in the system, it told me what album it's on, I brought that album up. I'm busy. But, okay, so fine. Fine, you're absolutely fine then, that's no problem. You know, it, once again, it, that's, a, that's a great excuse, Carl, brilliant. The show has been ruined, it's been partially ruined, but you've got a bit of an excuse. Alright, I didn't make a big deal out of it when mm. you said, oh, and whilst you're down there, get us a new 50 cent single. I never, I never said, why you don't I get the new 50 cent single? I asked you if 50 cent single was lying around. If, yeah. it, if it hadn't been here, I wouldn't have worried. So I get it, yeah, I did that for you. Right. And I come up, you say, has it got swearing in it? <laughs> well, well, I don't know, it's five to one, Steve. You're the producer! You're the around. producer, it's the brand new single, I never thought it'd been lying around in the XFM office anyway. But I don't, I don't have time to sit around listening to music. Sure, well, yeah. Right? I know that you have, now you've got an iPod that can hold 7,500 songs, I don't know when you're gonna get around to loading all them on, but, I haven't got the time. Sure. Busy, busy. Yeah. Huh? Fine, okay. No, no, that's, that's a perfect excuse, Carl. Well done, mate. Right. I just hope that I never have to depend on you in a real emergency. How did you meet your girlfriend? <laughs> through work. <laughs> what, through her work? <laughs> what, <laughs> you found out and said you- work have the same place. Oh, you're right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. You're quite an enigma, aren't you? Could you give us more on that? <laughs> at work. You met her at work. What, she came in selling sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> She was going through the bins outside. <laughs> what, what do you mean you married? Why are you having an attack on me? You're I'm the one who's sad and lonely. No, oh, not. he's done you again! He's done you yeah, again! Yeah, but what, what I thought was interesting was no. I just scratched at him and he just went mental. Yeah, no, It's like a bear caught in a trap. It's, it's funny, isn't it? You'll never learn. Carl. No, I was just interested to find out what the story was because it might be a really romantic story. Well, it's, it's not. All right, jeez. I, I mean, love the fact he doesn't want to talk about, about his you, love I, affair. I, I was thinking about you in the week <laughs> and like... <laughs> Does it worry you? I mean, you sort of joke about it now, and we're talking about it in the office, you know, like, oh, is, is Steve really touchy about the way he looks? And oh, what's this? Where's that come from? He's um, done it again. He's done you again. I was walking home the other night, and I was thinking about it. And do you <laughs> worry that when you're old, you will be on your own? <laughs> you did start it, though, didn't you? Well, Carl, I'm glad you brought this up. <laughs> because, no, no, because, I, I mean, for me, you know, a, a lightweight, frothy entertainment show <laughs> on XFM on a Saturday afternoon is exactly the place <laughs> <laughs> where I want to discuss uh, the desperate, lonely future that's inevitably uh, coming my way. Oh, God. I, I'll tell you what will cheer you up and forget yeah. all that. A bit of embrace. Oh, oh no. one of the most hated bands. Oh. But, but yeah, I don't know what we're talking about there. So we've got the film thing <laughs> going. We were talking the about- film. What were you talking about earlier about glasses as well and Steve taking his glasses off? What was that? What are you saying that in front of him now for? Was it- oh, was it an insult? It wasn't really an insult. Carl, what don't... were you up to? No, what was it? I genuinely don't remember. I- I genuinely don't remember. Well, I just- right, Steve, I'm not- I'm not having a go. Right? Um, just saying our people, um, it's a bit weird that you've got glasses because you've got a good pair of eyes on you. Right? <laughs> That- that isn't an insult. What were you talking about, though? What was it- why did it you- It was the fact that people who wear glasses always look a bit weird without them on. It's- it's like, you know, they- they were- they should- they should wear glasses. I- okay. Why did we get round to this? What was we talking about? What were we talking about? I don't know. I don't- I don't know. I don't know what that was. It sounds like an insult, even if it wasn't no, intended as well. it wasn't. It, it sounds wasn't. like an insult, Carl. <laughs> it does, yeah. No, it wasn't. I should listen. be able to punch you every time you insult me, though. No, but I'm not well, I'm doing go. it. I'm gonna give you a dead arm. Look, Steve, it's like you, you always Even if it wasn't, you intended it to be one. Well, what are you- Oh! <gasps> <gasps> That was real. Play a record. Yeah, but it's that's mad. Every time you insult me from that's now on. mad. Oh, is this the cardigans? Great. Brilliant. I didn't yeah. even say anything. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better. I can enjoy the rest of the show. Because actors are often very quite handsome people, but yet they're always quite yeah, we obnoxious. Yeah, we are, we are, we are, we are. No, I mean they're normally quite obnoxious for it. Again, you know, you're a good example <laughs> of that. And yet, yet, I think it must be the small man complex. That's what makes them so obnoxious and so kind of desperate for attention. 
Didn't right. realise it before. Steady on. Because I was like tower above everyone. You do, don't you? I'm, uh, for people who don't know who are listening, I'm six foot seven inches tall. That's, 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 that's high. Yeah. That's and, big. and, and, um, for people who've never seen him, he doesn't hold it well. It's not like he's a sort of handsome athlete, is it, Carl? He's a bit of a, what, what do you call him? A t Carl, uh, don't answer No, 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 no. Don't get drawn into that. No, no, you know, you, you know the game he's playing. No, 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 no. Do you know yesterday when you were in the office? Yeah. You did a little move. <laughs> and it reminded me of Blakey. <laughs> I oh, I hate you, Gervais. Oh, I hate you, Pilkington. That's his stance. Yeah, but even he was, he held it a little bit better, didn't he? Because he was a man, you know, yeah. he had a big coat and everything, a peak cap. But, uh, yeah. I can't believe you. Like, I've not suffered enough from being freakishly tall. Now, till my best buddies, yeah. live on radio, are just- It's not just the height, though, is it? It's the <laughs> posture and the face and everything. But it's got your places, oh. on it? <laughs> no. What do you no, mean? It's got me places. I think I think people give you a bit more of a chance in in your career and stuff. Cause it's like, uh. what? Yeah, stacking shelves. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can reach the high level. <laughs> Um, oh, you know, um, um rubbish. that's rubbish, Carl, those boys. Yeah, yeah. I'm ashamed to give them away. Carl, you know our mate Johnny, he's a Doctor Who fan. Yeah. Do you remember, um, he bought, um, uh, the Doctor Who magazine, um, and, uh, he went, um, to the toilet, and Steve got post-it notes and put geek on every page, and Johnny opened it on the tube, right, and it had geek and everything, and Johnny bought in the, the new Doctor Who magazine, I think this week's so or this month's, right, and they've, they've, um, they've done the perfect Doctor Who fan. Right, what the geek is, right, and it looks exactly like Steve. All right, don't have a go, really. It does. And, he went, and I, I, it, I, I'm gonna try and put it on the website. It's amazing. It's got your hair, glasses, it stands like you, it's sort of dressed like you, and it's only, and it's, it's hilarious, and he's, he's, he was, I mean, I'm insulting you now, it's, it sounds like an insult, but if you'd see it, you'd like, play a... Well, Rockbusters, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. Just a little um, bit annoyed. Just, uh, three clues. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we lost all the energy in this show, aren't we? Well, I'm just, I can't get over that insult. I'm just a little- No, three. we did, though. It just came out of nowhere. Come on, three clues. I wasn't expecting an insult. No, and, but uh, I think there was a sense of camaraderie on this. No, like, just it, email it, in, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Right, play a record, I'm just annoyed. I can't, I can't- What are we doing? Robert, I'm just, I'm just reading out the clues. Should we put this, let's put this one in for the Sony Award. Let's put this show in for the Sony Award. Play a song, Carl, because I need to discuss things with him. I'm just thinking, if I was to meet Steve in a restaurant- Yeah. Right, I, 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 Nothing untoward going on, we're just hanging out. We're no, just having a chat, just yeah, having sure. a normal night out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Who's paying? Because, I mean, <laughs> is it expensive? Right. Go Dutch, go Dutch, go Dutch. <laughs> I mean. Right, so, I, I, I say to you, I'll, I'll see you at eight, right, in yeah. this, in this restaurant. I turn up at the door, it's a bit of a posh place, mm -hmm. right. Uh, so he's, uh, Steve Merchant in. Yeah. And the waiter sort of goes, I, I, I don't know, what does he look like, right. And, uh. Where's he from? Just a f little French fella. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, what does he look like? So I'd, the th thing I pick up on first, tall, tall lad. Tall, yeah. And then he goes, oh, well, you know, we got lots of tall people in, right? Yeah. And I go, oh, big eyes, <laughs> big eyes. Yeah. And then he go, yeah, he's over there. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, you can have dinner and you can buy me dinner. I'm not sure you're going to get anywhere with me. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, what he hasn't said is, well, um, he gets frustrated because we have to go from restaurant to restaurant for something I can eat. But the reason we've only got about three restaurants to choose from are that because he doesn't want to spend more than a fiver at lunchtime. At lunchtime? Mm. If I was going out of an evening, you'd spend a decent amount of wallop. But mm. lunchtime, Would you? I spend? You'd be happy to spend twenty quid on lunch. Imagine that every single day. There's no one out there who's eating lunch, 20 quid a day on lunch. It's crazy. You don't need that much food at lunchtime. Because we, I don't know what happens. You go in there, you have some kind of, you know, tiger green curry for lunch. You're asleep by 1.30. We're trying to work. We're trying to write TV shows. And you're dozing off like one of those giant anacondas that's just <laughs> eating a sheep. And it's slowly digesting it. It takes like three weeks. He doesn't eat car. He does not like the spare. He, he, he'll go, he'll walk a mile out of his way to get a sandwich for I've been in an argument over that 50p that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, again, here's the situation, Carl. Go I on. lent you 50p and you decided you weren't going to pay me back. It should be to my discretion if I say, don't worry about it, Carl. You should offer me the 50p, go, there's that 50p I owe you, and I'll go, don't worry about it, Carl. But you didn't even do that. Uh, it's the way that you were, like... I said, where's my 50p? You went, oh, you don't need that. That's not your decision, I, didn't, I didn't say that. I said, I, I, I don't think I've got it at the moment, or whatever. Mm. Rubbish. And you're going through my pockets and that. Rubbish. 50p. Ridiculous. You've just given him a keg of beer for free, haven't you? Well, let's, let's not go over it again. I'll tell you, you're gonna go along later to the Live 8 gig and you're probably gonna see some bands that can make an effort to entertain you, but oh, if you want entertainment, Rick, you know it. Go on. There's only one person to book. Go on. Me. 
if you, if you, you know, you have perhaps yeah. something to do, uh, because uh, I mean, I'm, I mean, obviously a top well, DJ uh, on the radio, uh, but where my, where I really come into my own is DJing in any kind of club in Well, you told me you were DJing, uh, I didn't go to it, uh, DJing at a party, and you said the place was rocking. The place was roaring. And I loved it. Uh, Carl just, just said he was there and they weren't. Well, that's nonsense, Carl, they because you know so very well that when I was put, I'd put on a tune, they'd cheer. Yeah, but it, it was late on in the night, they would have done that, whatever you put on. That's nonsense. No, they, they, said they were happy and everything. I'm not saying they weren't having a good time. It was your party. It was it was all right. But they weren't going mental like you're you're sort of making up. They were definitely going mental. No, when I put on the no. proclaimers, they could not believe their luck. No. No. <laughs> they they would have walked a thousand miles. <laughs> was it good though? Was he? Were they really? What were they doing? Were they dancing? They were dancing. Were they? It's dancing and that, but they weren't sort of cheering, going you know more and all that at the end. What's well, about? Oh, Take wow. On Me came on, they, big, the big, the big cheer went up. Oh, I don't I've, know to believe. I've been there, done it, Steve. I've, I've been the DJ as well, I Oh, it might be jealousy. It I might be like professional a, jealousy there. Like a, yeah. I think it's cause my fortunes are on the up, and these are on the down. You know, we all know famously that he had, uh, cookies making, making music, music his happen. DJ outfit. Didn't happen. Did, didn't. I did enough. I just wanted to do enough to pay for the equipment. <laughs> and I did. And that was that. But I don't like crowds, do I? <laughs> Carl, it was you that worked out the maths. And worked out I was 28, because they just worked out I'm 27. You are 27. No way. Yeah, I told- I asked you, didn't I? And yeah, I said- because, no, but what I sort of questioned was, I said, well, if you're 27 today, that means last week you were 26. Well, well done, yeah. That's um, irrelevant. So, so therefore you assumed that I must be 28 then? Yeah. Whereas I, I assumed you were using, you know, your knowledge of maths, no, such as it I, is. I wouldn't do that. No, sure, sure. Wow. I, I actually got lost in that conversation because I didn't, I genuinely didn't know what he meant with, would mean last week you were 26. I don't uh, know what that <laughs> I meant. I don't know what it meant. Wow. Well, it is Steve's birthday. Well, and he would have been 26 last week. Ah. <laughs> so tells you, uh, you genuinely frightened me because it's those staring eyes, there's nothing behind him, it's this little bald head. Looks like Davros looking at me. Genuine, just genuine fear on his face when he enters into a conversation with another human but being. What, what bit don't you understand? If, he was, if he's 27 today, he would have been 26 last week and he doesn't look 26. He didn't look 26 last week. He looks older than 28 today. You've started on, on his birthday, you're still having a go at him. Carl, I don't look like the kind of hot stud that I actually am, but face facts, <laughs> that's the truth, mate. <laughs> yeah, get live with, with it. it. Get with live the program, jeez. Um, I had some exciting news this week, Carl. You'll be pleased to find out. Um, I, I, I'm worried that you might get a little bit jealous because it's obviously going to impact on your world quite strongly. Because I know you think you like things to be quite, the, quite you know, samey. You like the status quo to be maintained. You like the fact that in the past, you know, we've had some crosswords. You know, because you I remember, what did you think of me when I first walked in? When I first came in on the yeah, first well, day of I don't know why you're making a big deal. Do you want to bring? Because it? Do you I, I'm just, just being honest, honest, though. I'm just well, being honest about a lot of people who see you for the first time sort of go, "Well, he's a bit weird." <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I love that Steve that you brought it up, and then you're again. But I'm you're sure that wasn't what you said before. No, did he, he said before. I, yeah, he, well, well he's I, a bit weird. Yeah, well, I, he looked at you, and uh, I knew I could see by the look on his face. You know when uh, when you know you your kid, and your kid's sort of scared of something, and they go, "Why is your kid?" goes, "Oh, he doesn't like pigeons or spiders." Right. It was like that when I saw Carl, and I brought you in, and I went, "What do you think of that, Carl?" I could see the look on his face that he d he was disturbed. Sure. And then, as he said. You get used to it, don't you? Yeah, you get used to it. And you, and you have changed a little bit. Your hair's a bit smarter now and you've got some nicer glasses and that, I think. <laughs> or I might just get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Don't bring it up, Steve. Don't well, look at me like that. So you say that you think some other people in the office thought the same? Do you know that for sure? Carl. Did you discuss it? Carl. Yeah, I think, I think they do, yeah. Okay, leave it there then. But not just in the office. As you walk through <laughs> the building. <laughs> oh, it's, it's worse than you ever thought. It's best if, if you leave it. Well, we're not going to leave it. We're going to get you on the poster. Yeah. I mainly have to see myself on videotape this morning. That's oh, I, I showed him. I'm, I'm, I, you know, uh, the animal show I did, the show. Yes. I'm doing a video and I did behind the scenes footage. And I've got a. Uh, you've seen it, haven't you? I feel a little bit of Carl on there, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's lovely. He can't believe it. He said, Is it playing slow? <laughs> He's so slow. And I come into the office going, All right. It, that's how you I'm talk. I'm head as well. I look like I'm looking into a spoon. <laughs> I'm not happy with it. <laughs> I just think that if we're willing to, 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 uh, if Ricky's willing to use his celebrity profile for the sake of the show, yeah. I'm willing to look like a, you know, let's say a fairly handsome kind of cool customer, I think at least, the very least, Carl, is that you appear on there as well. Yeah. You could dress are up you smart. Are you worried that you'll look the worst out of all three of us? Uh, who am I standing next to? I'm next to Steve. <laughs> I'm, pr I'm fairly confident. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like the way it's so predictable. You pull the string because you know what it is. It's not <laughs> you pull the string. <laughs> Um, anyway, I just thought I wanted to say, really. It is tragic. What's tragic? What, what did you want me to say about that song? Just your opinion. Your own opinion was fine. It's, it's in fact, in fact, your own opinion is better than anything I could really hope for. W without doubt. Whenever I ask you a question... You constantly <laughs> surprise us. Yeah. You're, it's, it's wonderful. So only ever, carry on telling the truth, carry on saying exactly what's on your mind, and I think this could become a great... You're like a man who was frozen <laughs> in Victorian era <laughs> and has been reawoken <laughs> and he's kind of discovering the world. Some <laughs> things make sense, other things yeah. don't. It's beautiful. It's As really opposed nice. to one that was made in a castle in Victorian times like <laughs> Steve. Oh, that's just... Oh, I've joined in with Carl. I can't believe you're oh, on sorry. my side. Yeah, no, it was irresistible though, wasn't it? Mm. I'm really sorry. Should we play a record? Yeah. So, we were talking about pre- should we play a record? Is that link too long already I'm before already we bored. actually got to something? I'm already bored. Carl, we've got to get to something. We've got to do Carl, something. why don't you contribute something? You've been silent. Now, that is scraping about. Really like, is, is we're it? in trouble. Oh, no. Oh, we're failing. Who can we- who can we bring on that surefire always delivers- Audio dynamite. Yeah. Carl! The big guns! <laughs> Come on, Carl! No, I was just thinking, there is nobody else who looks like Steve. <laughs> <laughs> He's done you. That's <laughs> outrageous. <laughs> Although, to be honest with you, that insult has resurrected things. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Shut up. They got two monkeys, right? And Don't starve. Because they'd seen the owners. They'd seen the owners with guns and what have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That sounds fucking So they had a, bit of, had a bit of a shoot off. Yeah. That's how that, that's how they sorted it out. And who won? I think it was George. The one called George. Right. So they had, I think they had 17 kids. The farm's still running. So, that's, that's like the, the last little monkey news there. Good little Rick, happy ending to that one. if you were to rub your nipple against his lips while I held him down. Right, come off it now. Come on. No, I'm not doing it. Bruce Springsteen, Thunder Road, last track on next with I'm you, not Steve. Not you can check this all out on the webcam. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I've got fingers. Get his arm out of the way. Get the arm out of the way. This happened on Scum. <laughs> It's it happening again, Steve. What's happening? It's going all wrong. Yeah. We're talking rubbish. Are we? Yeah. We should have played two in a row. He's having a go, isn't he? Blimey. Can I just kiss and make up with Carl? No, that is- No, let me just- let me just kiss my kiss. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't- next- then next week it'll be the same again. What's it doesn't mean anything. It's, it's like saying on sorry. Lips. Oh. It's on the lips. Go on, he's- oh, Carl! Carl! Get off <laughs> it! <laughs> I've never- Carl has oh, gone a absolute shade of purple, straining not to have merchants- There's no point, Steve. What no. There's no point. No, just shake. Just shake and make up. <laughs> <laughs> shake what, Rick? <laughs> there you go. All friends, sit down. This- that's lovely. That's a lovely moment. So there's Steve Merchant, with funny glasses on, in this place, horror, and he's walking round. Mm. Do you think he scared people, Carl? I've- I've set this question out, haven't I? <laughs> I know- I've, I know, I've, lo I've loaded the question- I know I'm the answer you're fishing for. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, do you just want to have a dig at me? Cos it's <laughs> coming up to two o'clock, and you've not really put a lot of, uh, effort in today, slagging yeah, me I off. I don't do it on purpose. No, he doesn't do it on purpose. He's, he's, he's just- he's just an honest northerner and he can't lie. He's like George Washington, but without the wooden teeth. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think your heart's in it anymore, either, Carl. I was alright today, but Steve's really dragged me down. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. There's wait, 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 I just need to know why. No, do you know, like, yeah. people are being miserable around you. Yeah. I, I was full yeah. of beans when I came 